Hi, this is Nicole Hetty from Paper Tray Ink, and today I'm going to show you a bit more about these graduated backgrounds that I've been doing a lot um, lately on my blog. Um, I'm going to show you how to do one with Copic markers, and I'm also going to show you how to create one with a watercoloring technique using our ink refills. So to start, um, I'm going to show you how to create one with Copic markers, and it measures three and a half by four and three quarters. And I'm starting with the BG11 Copic, and I'm using the brush end. And I'm just going to apply my initial stripes of color here. So I'm starting at the top. And you are going to see your stroke marks with this initial, um, initial layering, but we're going to be adding more layers of color as we go. So you don't need to worry about that too much. I'm moving on to the YG13 and adding few strokes of that and you just want to go from end to end using one smooth stroke as you layer each color. Now YG17 and while you're doing this you're going to think this does not look blended at all but we will be removing that in a minute when we start layering more colors. This is BG72. And finally, we're going to add a bit of BG18 at the very bottom here. Okay. Now that we have the initial stripe set up, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to layer color right on the seams between um, the different stripes that we created. So I'm going to go back to the BG11 and I'm going to start at the top here and I'm going to layer the color pretty heavy. I, this is the point where I'm trying to eliminate the stroke marks from earlier. Now when you get to the seam you want to go down about two stroke widths into the color below it and then keep going back and up over that seam between the colors. And you can see how they start to blend together. Just like that. So now I'm going to move on to the YG13. And I'm going to do the same thing down here, right on the seam of where the colors blend. I'm just going to keep layering on top of each other. And you want to might even want to go back and add a little stroke between the color above it and its actual stripe. Just kind of play with it till it starts achieving the look that you want it to have. I'm going to move on to the YG17. And you can see how this is all really starting to blend together perfectly. It's just all about laying the color because Copic markers blend better the wetter the ink is on the paper. So that's something important to keep in mind. Okay, this is BG72. And when you're transferring um, from blue to green like this, you really want to lay on quite a bit of extra color in between those stripes because you really want those to blend well. And last but not least is BG18. And I kind of, the last color here, I start at the bottom and kind of work my way up. So this is my final result here, and I'm going to go in now and add the sentiment. I'm using the stamp set Happy Trails today for my projects. I'm going to add the sentiment Celebrate Today and Every Day corner here of the graduated background we created with the Copics. 
And now I'm going to add the butterfly trail. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to line this up because the stamps are clear. So I'm going to line that up with the end of the T and celebrate. So there's my butterfly trail. And now for the actual butterflies, um, I die cut this. This is our original butterfly die. And this, uh, that's cut from new, new Leaf cardstock. And this butterfly is die cut with the Happy Trails um, die. I'm going to use uh, Hawaiian Shores ink and I've got the coordinating butterfly stamp from Happy Trails and I'm inking it up with Hawaiian Shores ink and I'm going to add that to the die cut here that. what I'm going to do so I'm going to layer these two on top of each other using a bit of 1 8 inch score tape. So first I'm going to add some tape to the back of the new leaf butterfly. And then I'm going to add a strip to the back of the stand butterfly here. I'm going to hear that in play the new leaf butterfly in place first and then add the stamped one on top of it. Since I just put the score tape in the middle, I can kind of bend up the butterfly a bit here, both layers. So you end up with something like that. Now I need to add a few rhinestones to the center. Um, you've seen me do this in videos before, but I do like to use a craft knife to pick up my rhinestones and adhere them into place. So I've got a medium sized rhinestone right in the middle, and then one small one. Oops, that one's getting away. One small one above and below the medium one. Okay, so there's our finished focal point. I'm going to layer this on a piece of white cardstock to be used as a mat. And then all of this gets adhered onto an Aquamist A2 card base. Just like that. And there's the completed card for that. Background technique I was going to show you was um, creating one with a watercolor effect using our ink refills. So I'm starting with the same size cardstock block I started uh, with on the last project. It measures three and a half inches by four and three quarters inches. And I have um, our ink refills here. I've got orange zest and raspberry fizz that I'm using. I've got a CD case here, an empty CD case that I'm going to use as my palette. And um, really you can use anything made out of plastic or whatever, anything that won't absorb the ink. And I'm just going to create two puddles here of ink refill. And I have water and I have watercolor brush. And so what I'm going to do here first initially is not get too much water on the brush, but I'm going to wet, do an initial wet down of the cardstock. And like I said, you want to just do gentle light strokes of water. If you add too much water the cardstock gets too saturated and it doesn't um, this technique just doesn't work as well. So I got my paintbrush wet again and I'm picking up a little bit of orange zest ink and I'm just going to flow it across like that and you can see it starts doing this beautiful 
um, feathering technique. I'm getting my brush wet again and I'm picking up some raspberry fizz and I'm going to do a brush of that. That wasn't quite dark enough. Picking up some more and brushing that on. And you can see how it's starting to feather there. Don't really like how it's looking down here. Adding a little bit of water. Picking up some more orange ink and brushing that across here. And I can see the bottom part of my cardstock has dried out from my initial wetting. So I'm getting that wet and then adding some more raspberry fizz. And my ends here aren't, I get a little bit too much white showing. I'm going to go in, fill that in a little, just a little bit here to make it look more cohesive. And there you go, that is my watercolor background. Now you're going to want to let this dry um, before you use it for anything. So um, I've got a backup one here I'm going to dig out for using for the rest of the project. Okay, here I am. I'm back with a dried version of the background. And um, I forgot to mention earlier that if you want to dry this quickly, you can uh, dry it um, with an iron or a heat tool like you would use for embossing. Um, if you're going to let it air dry, if you press it in between two heavy books um, with some scrap paper, it will help make it um, stay flat and prevent curling. So what I'm going to do with this block now that I have this dry, I'm actually going to tear pulling upwards so I get that white exposed edge. I'm going to tear part of this off like this. I'm not quite happy with how the top edge came out so I'm going to tear a little bit more off. And I've got, got that going on. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to a Raspberry Fizz card base. And when you have these watercolor pieces, you want to use a little bit more adhesive than you probably normally would just to help flatten it out a bit. So I'm going to adhere this in place. And I love how that white torn edge kind of pops on the Raspberry Fizz cardstock. So I've adhered this well. I'm going to add the sentiment, let your dreams take flight. down in the corner here. And just like the last project, I'm using the same butterfly trail and I'm going to add it to the end of dreams. And I'm actually going to let it go off the torn edge of the background that we created. So there's that, and I'm going to, I've got the same butterflies I had for the last project, only this time I'm stamping the butterfly from Happy Trails with Raspberry Fizz ink onto the die cut. Once again, I'm going to use score tape on the back side of these butterflies. Hearing one to the other. I'm putting it here at the end of this trail. Add the rhinestones to the center, medium in the middle, small above and below. And fold these up, the wings up of the butterflies just a little bit for some and there is this completed project with the watercolor background. Now I've made a 
couple other projects I just wanted to show you real quick. Um, I watercolored the same background here and I die cut it with um, the Signature Series Butterfly right here and I um, popped that up on foam dimensionals. I added the same butterfly trail and another sentiment from the set and I just love the way that looks and I wanted to show you how I use the die cut butterfly separately showing that you don't have to always use this technique for backgrounds but you can also die cut the paper that you create and it creates really pretty um, basically essentially pattern paper that you could die cut any shape out of adds a real artistic flair so thank you for joining me today for this Make It Monday. I hope that some of you decide to experiment a bit with graduated backgrounds. And I'm really, really looking forward to seeing your take on this challenge. And I genuinely hope that you have a lot of fun with it and perhaps you've learned something new today. We hope to see your creations and thanks for joining us.